Hi there and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be going over my goal for 2022. Specifically, this goal is a no buy art supply challenge. So that means that I'm not allowed to buy any art supplies for 2022. In this video, I'm going to go over my why for why I'm doing this, my rules, the rules I've set out for myself, and my rewards because to change a habit it's really good to have a reward system as motivation so I'll talk about that as well and in the background I am painting a Santa Claus using gouache I'm not super familiar with gouache so this is playing and learning as I go this one's not a tutorial it is just a chat to hopefully share what I'm doing and maybe inspire some of you to do the same if you're having the same feelings as me and just listen while you create as well. Okay, so no buy art supply. What is it? I was inspired because I realized that I was collecting faster than I could use. So what was happening is that when I was procrastinating or afraid to do something or hesitating in my own art creation, I would start researching a product, trying to learn about a new watercolor or find out what's come out and I was learning a lot about products and purchasing products with plans for future videos but then I wasn't using them and I wasn't creating those videos because what happened is it started to pile up and I started to feel overwhelmed and it creates this pattern where the feeling of productivity is coming from buying not from using and I want to swap that in 2022. I want to change that focus and push myself to do the hard thing. And the hard thing is to take that risk, to put yourself out there, even when you don't feel ready, because you're never going to feel ready unless you practice. And to practice making YouTube videos, putting them out there, to practice teaching, to practice creating and doing tutorials, I have to do it and I have to put it out there. Why number one was about time, taking time away from shopping and putting it towards more productivity. Why number two is money, saving that money that I would have spent buying things that I don't need. It can go towards things that I do need to further my career. It can go towards classes. I could purchase it on experiences if I want to take a course that I need on Photoshop or video editing or even local classes or if I want to put that money towards buying a booth at a market. Things that will really enhance my career or to put it towards my website development or advertising and marketing. Those types of productivity instead of collecting. So a better use of my money is why number two. Why number three is to declutter, just to use what I have and be more environmentally conscious, not to feel that need to consume all the time. So I think that it will really bring me appreciation for what I already have. I'm excited for that and to share what I already have with you. In the next year, you will definitely see new products and those are things that I have purchased in the past and not opened because I felt that I needed to open them as part of a video and I still do want to do that. I want to share that experience with you, but those aren't meaning that I cheated on my no buy. I will be completely honest about what I had before when I got it. I will not cheat and say that I've had this forever and... I recently bought it. I'm going to stick to my no buy. So when you see things in the future, rest assured, I have got them in the past. I just held on to them like they were too precious to ever use and stowed them away. That will happen. That is a reward that I'll use for myself though. I've already planned this so that for successes at the end of each month that I've had a successful month where I've purchased absolutely nothing, where I've saved that money, then I am allowed to go into my collection of what I already have and choose something that I've deemed too precious to ever open, to ever use, and I get to reward myself by opening it and using it. So I'm going to use what I already have to reward myself for not shopping. And I definitely have enough to get through the year in that regard. My rules, most important, 
I was thinking about the no buy and looking at what kind of rules are out there and I found Kendra, she's an account on YouTube, who has been outlining for the last, I don't know, at least a month or two, her plans for her no buy 2022 and she has done an excellent job documenting it. I'm just going to say her account again is Kendra, K-I-N-D-R-A. She has her rules laid out, she has her why, she has her goals. She even did a stock inventory of everything she owns to prepare for this. I haven't done the inventory. Maybe that will be something that I can do along the way in this process. But I did write down my rules and my rules are a bit different than hers. Hers is definitely strict because she's not even allowed to borrow supplies from her kids or use gift cards or anything like that. But for mine, I have a little bit of leniency. And what I mean by leniency is if I run out of something completely, so if I completely run out of all cold press watercolor paper, all of it, and I don't have anything that can substitute, then I am allowed to replace it. And the reason for that is that art is my business. So if I cannot create it to sell, to have an income, then I'm not doing my business. So I am allowed to re to replace things that I run out of completely and I am allowed to purchase things specifically required for business and not because I want them because they would be nice because they're an absolute need for example if a client needed a specific size of paper that I didn't already have then I can go out and buy that one sheet of paper for the client so the exception I do have an exception there because it is my business and I need to keep it going I've allowed that for myself, but otherwise no purchases. And the one other exception that I have is I have $80 left on a gift card that I got for my birthday last June that I am allowed to spend at some point in the year. Ideally, I would use that for what I just mentioned. If I run out of something or need something very specific for my business, then I can use that gift card there. And then hopefully I won't need to spend anything at all on supplies even if it's a replacement. Okay, so, so far I have outlined my rules, my why, and my reward system, that being that monthly opening something that I haven't let myself open yet as my reward system for not shopping for an entire year, not until January 1st, 2023 is the cutoff for this challenge. If you would like to join me, I would absolutely love that. I created a Facebook group called No Buy Art Supply. So far, I'm the only one in it because I haven't shared it anywhere until the release of this video. So if anyone out there is interested in trying a no buy for themselves, you don't need to have the same rules as me. Like I mentioned, Kendra, hers are a bit stricter because she is not even allowing herself to replace anything but I am allowed replacements, you can have your own rules. Even if it's a low buy, like you're still allowing yourself to buy paper, but not paint. So things like that, everyone has their own goals, their own things that they're working on. I just want a community where we support each other to follow our own rules, not enable each other to break them and encourage each other to, to cheat or do this without guilt. No, I, I want us to support each other in the goals that we have so that we can feel pride and happiness in accomplishing them. And this is just a small one. I have several other goals, but this video, the theme of it is that no buy. In the first half of the video, I have mentioned all the rules and everything for my no buy, but now that that's out of the way, I wanna talk about what I wanna devote my time to and some of the goals I have related to the no buy related to using these supplies. So one of the things that I have hoarded and collected over the last few years is sketchbooks. I don't even use sketchbooks enough to justify hoarding and collecting sketchbooks. So that'll be a huge shift for me is using a sketchbook every day and doing more of those sketchbook tours and those challenges and using it purposefully for that personal growth and creating those artistic goals to improve as an artist picking those subjects that I want to improve on and working at them in my sketchbook. So I have a treat of a sketchbook. When I finish one, I already have enough backups that I don't need to buy one. I'll be able to go right on to the next one. And so on my channel, you'll be able to see me using those sketchbooks. And then hopefully at the year's end, I'll have gone through a few of them enough to have a comparison and a good idea and a good grasp of this style I like, the kind I like, 
and which ones are my favorites and I can share that information with you. So that's one related to sketchbooks that I would like to share. I do feel inclined to say that just because I am doing a no buy doesn't mean that everyone else is in the same stage of their journey. So if you're still trying to figure out what you would like to get, I will still be posting links, my affiliate links to things that I've enjoyed, products that I like, because I know that we're all in a different place. Some of you don't have anything yet or are looking to expand into professional. So this isn't about stopping you or enabling others. I don't want to seem like a hypocrite by sharing these products and this information. Art and art supplies and learning about watercolors and different paper. That's something that I've been interested in consuming on YouTube and I'll still be interested in it even when I'm not in that collecting phase. So it's something that I'd like to share as well. Just because it's an interest, it's something I enjoy watching and I know others enjoy it too. So it doesn't mean that I'm telling you to go out and buy things if you're trying not to then don't. I won't be, but I'll still be watching the videos. So it's, I don't think that it's hypocritical to share the things that I have and the enjoyment that I'm getting from them. I think that it's part of the journey for me. So if that's too enabling, I understand you don't have to watch those videos. You can only watch the ones related to no buy if you're on a no buy and they're too tempting for you. But if you're not on a no buy, then don't worry. I'm going to be having product videos and reviews and those kinds of content coming forward. I'll also be working on some new tutorials. Please let me know what you're interested in, what you'd like to see. I will be creating a list of goals that I have for YouTube videos and trying to get more out there and film more. So please let me know. Let me know if you enjoy this type. That's the voiceover where I'm kind of rambling that you can listen to. It's more like a podcast while you're drawing. I like these too because I enjoy listening to them and I can create. I don't have to look up all the time. And let me know if you'd like to see something different. I can maybe do a tour at some point so you can have an idea of what I have, the kinds of things that I can show you. Um, thank you for listening. The rest of this video is just going to be me finishing the outlining and final touches on this painting. So it's going to change your music and you can watch or you can tune out. Please comment below what your goals are for your no buy if you're participating and if you are not participating please let me know on about what kind of videos you'd like to see from me for the future or what your goals are not related to no buy do you have any art goals art business goals things that you'd like to work on i think they'd all be great topics and and great to hear about so thank you and i look forward to i guess hearing from you seeing you again in my next video and I forgot this in my last video, so I'm going to say it in this one. Please like and subscribe if you would like to follow along. It's really helpful. You hear this from every YouTuber. I know. I'm just trying to join and be one of them too. So thank you so much and have a great new year.